What's going on, guys? <clears throat> All right, well, I want to start it off. We got some good stuff that we can go through today if you guys are willing to hang out. But it looks like Eric has um, actually decided not to speak today. So if you got stuff to do, you can obviously hop off. Uh, it doesn't sound like he's going to be speaking, which honestly, to, um, to his credit, that's not necessarily an admission of guilt. But um, I'm sure his lawyer told him not to talk to him. So basically, in the lawsuit, um, they did ask for some discretion on um, him being able to talk about some of these things because a lot of the stuff that's happening. But today, uh, if you guys are willing to hang out, I have some good stuff to go over. And really why I wanted to do this video was, um, you know, I've been in the financial industry for a while and I literally just found out they're not doing the live. So um kind of sucks but there's some really good information that's out there and so the reason why i wanted to do a video was because uh there's a lot of confusion going on out there and i've gotten a chance to get the, t the court documents i've read through them i've seen what's going on i've read and heard a lot of the statements and stuff that's going on that's out there and so i don't want to necessarily make a judgment call uh, i'll let you guys do that but i'll display a bunch of information here that you can basically go through at your leisure if you'd like to. And so, um, unfortunately, it feels kind of like, um, you know, your parents are splitting up. It feels like mom and dad are breaking up and you've got to kind of try to figure out who you want to live with. And I think that it's really important to make an educated decision on that. And so I hate it when this stuff happens. Unfortunately, our industry kind of has a culture of doing stuff like this. And um, without getting into too much of my own commentary, I want to give you guys some of the information that I have. Part of the challenge is, is that the court has actually asked for this case to be sealed. So what that basically means is that you're not supposed to be sharing a lot of this information. And it, it officially hasn't been sealed yet, but it could come down any day. So you can find the documents online. It's uh, Pacer. Uh, doc, uh, Pacer uh, is a, the system that you can go on there and you can actually find all of the court documents. You do have to create a profile. You got to pay some money to access and download all this stuff. But I'll go through what information I have. And this kind of started, this wasn't something I really wanted to do, but it started with a conversation that I had with Paul Hart yesterday um, because he put out some videos basically saying that he's now been robbed, and um, that WFG has basically turned off his code number, that um, you know he's spent all this time, and, and I love Paul Hart. Paul Hart was one of the reasons why I got into the industry. I saw some of his uh, convention stuff, and I, I love the way that he talked about it and the mindset and all this stuff. And so it, it pains me to even have to have this conversation, but uh, you know as well as I do, we're all going to have to talk to our friends and our family and our agents and our clients about the stuff that's going on. And so I think that it's important to be prepared to have some of those conversations, especially if you're thinking about making a decision on where you're going to end up. And so that's just my kind of two cents on it. So we'll get into some of that. Um, there was a great video that I think I want to start off with a little bit on what um, Nick actually talked about is going on in the case. And so if you guys haven't seen that already, I will make sure at the end of this video that I put a link that you can go watch that. So basically Nick and Dan Charlier did a great video and they were kind of talking about some of the things that were happening in this lawsuit. And um, the problem that I'm seeing is that I'm getting two sets of information. There's one set of information that's going on that's coming from the people who are moving to this new company, uh, GFI. And there's another set of information of what's in the lawsuit, and they don't match up. And so I think it's important to actually figure out what's going on if you're making some decisions, and I think decisions that are going to impact the rest of your life, the decisions that are going to impact your family, decisions that are going to impact your clients, uh, I think it's important to be educated before you make uh, that kind of decision. I'm not going to say which way you should go. Uh, you obviously make that decision for yourself. But I want to give you the information that I have to the best of my ability, obviously with that the court documents being sealed here shortly. It is kind of a, um, it is kind of a tricky road to walk down legally. 
Uh, and obviously, if anything I put on here, if you're involved in it, if it's a video of yours, Nick or Charlier, or um, I also got some information to kind of go against what Paul Hart was saying in that I don't think he was actually even terminated. That's kind of a question that's on the table. Uh, so I'm going to put information on here. If anybody doesn't like it, if it's something that needs to be sealed, whether it's the court, whether it's Paul, whether it's Charlier, I'm friends with pretty much all these guys, or at least I look up to you guys. So if anything needs to be taken down, just let me know and I will pull it, pull it off of this video. Um, but I want to share with you guys what I have, and then you can make an educated decision on what you want to do for the rest of your life. And so I want to start with, uh, the video that, uh, and we're not going to do the whole video. We'll just kind of walk through some pieces because we've got a lot to uncover here, right? Because there's what's being said by agents that I think potentially has some, uh, things that are inaccurate to try to get to recruit people over. And then there's what's actually in the court filings and then conversations that are happening behind closed doors. And so I'm just going to do my best to kind of expose what's out there. And then, then that way you can make an educated decision around what you want to do. Uh, and so I'm going to work on pulling up this video um, that I want to share with you guys. So like I said, this first one's going to be from Nick and Charlie A. And he's talking about, uh, he basically had a conversation with Eric about um, what was going on. And so, um, he had a behind the scenes conversation with him about what was going to happen. And, uh, he had to sign an NDA and he's basically sharing his experience. So you guys can have an understanding of what's going on. We'll talk a little bit about the lawsuit. If you guys have questions, I'll, I'll pop that on. And I, I see some questions in the comments. Eric is not actually doing a live today. So I just got noticed. I looked on Paul's thing and he is not actually doing a live. I don't think he's going to be doing one at all. According to the lawsuit, they basically asked for some discretion on what can be said and what cannot be said by people who are in the actual lawsuit. So again, that's not an admission for Eric. It's not a mission of guilt or any of that stuff. I, if I was Eric's lawyer and I'm obviously not a lawyer, but I would tell him not to go out and have a conversation in the middle of a lawsuit. So um, if you guys want to hang out and still talk about some of the stuff that's going on, you're welcome to. If not, come back and visit this video later or go do whatever you got to do today. But I just want to be transparent on that. And so the main thing that I want to do here is just bring light. I hate being lied to. I don't know if you guys are that way. And so I want to be able to make educated decisions for myself and for my family based on what the truth is. And unfortunately, there's a lot of lies that are going on out there that I think is just kind of unfair. And so... Um, somebody says, do you know, do you know what, uh, exactly happened to Eric? Yeah. So Bali, Balil, Balil, sorry if I'm destroying that. I'm, uh, I do kind of know what's going on. So basically I have a copy of the lawsuit. I've read through it. I've studied it. Um, but there's also conversations that are going on. Um, yeah, Eric was asked not to, I would, I would believe that. I would think that his lawyer, if he was any good, would tell him not to come on and, and get on there. And so Eric Jensen. So yeah, Eric, let's get into a little bit. I, did you guys already watch, get to the point and play? Okay. The Charlie video. So we're not going to get into the whole thing. You guys can go watch it. It's on YouTube. Uh, I think it's behind a wall. So you have to be invited to it. Um, so let me pull that up and you can kind of hear a little bit of what's going on behind the scenes. So I've got to set this up. <clears throat> Obviously to be able to pull that up. And um, let's see, PowerPoint full. We'll play it in a couple different parts so that we can kind of talk about it individually. Let's see, downloads. Nick. Coming okay. event, can we meet? All right, there's Nick. Sorry for the delay of the video. I was hoping to actually have Eric on today, as I'm sure you were as well. So let's do this. All right. This is the first part. Um. And then he responded back. He said, anything for you, Stan? 
Always happy to meet with you. I've actually been meaning to reach out to you. I've got some big things to talk to you about. Can you meet me at this address on Wednesday? And so I, uh, I proceeded to go to an office address. And when I showed up, the first thing I noticed, and instead of saying Pinnacle Elite on the door, it said Global Financial Impact. Now, Eric wasn't there yet. It was actually his assistant, Erica. But I sat down with her and I asked her what Global Financial Impact was. And she said, you're going to find out some very big things today. But before we can tell you anything, we need you to sign this. And then she slid over an NDA, a non-disclosure agreement for me to be able to sign. Um, upon asking what it was for, she said that they couldn't tell me anything unless I signed it. So I was, you know, I had to sign that. Then Eric, about five minutes later, came in, sat down. And the first thing he said, he, he greeted me, said hello first. He said, hey, before we get started, I need you to turn off your phone. So I pulled out my phone, turned it off. He made sure it was off. I had to sit it on the table. And then we spent the next three hours together as he painted this beautiful picture for me about what he was creating. And so I got to tell you, in that meeting, what ended up happening is, he told me that he was going to give me ownership in the company and that he was going to make me one of 10 people that had that ownership. He told me he was going to be on that I was going to be on the board of directors and there was only going to be five people he was putting in that position, but there was nobody that he trusted more than me to be in that role. Um, on top of that, he painted a picture of a higher comp plan and you know better ownership and all this kind of stuff. And he told me that Rich Stolle was on the board and he told me that you know, Dan, Daniel Fombo was already going and he told me that Greg Cap was going and he told me that you know, all these people and, you know, I gotta, just to summarize that, had they all been true, going with him would have been the right idea. But I literally caught him over the course of the next week, and I'll tell you how I caught him in these lies, 15 different lies that he said straight to my face just in that one meeting. And so in that meeting, Dan, I got to tell you, so at the end, like he's offering me to go direct to the company, which obviously like that would be bypassing my hierarchy structure and taking me out from my uplines who I highly respect and trust and love. And so I told him, I said, Eric, I'll go with you, but only if we take care of the people that took care of me. So the one thing I need is a commitment that you're going to take care of Pat, Kevin, and Rob. And he said, you have my word. I will absolutely take care of them, but you can't tell them anything. Mm. And I said, okay, well, when can they find out? Because I, I need to make sure that I need them to know. He said, well, I need to be the one to tell them. I'll make sure it happens as soon as possible. But until then, you can't tell them anything. Otherwise, I won't take care of them. So I left that meeting feeling very conflicted because of the fact that I have tremendous amount of respect and amazing relationships with my upline. And now I feel like I can't tell them this huge thing that's happening. And so after leaving that meeting, Eric had me uh, download an app called Signal. He called me. He was pumped and believed in me. He told me that he was going to have my wife get coded over there and that she was going to be the one getting licensed and that he had all the lawsuit program figured out and how we could easily transition over and basically just promised me the world like this sounded like it was going to be the smoothest transition and he spent millions of dollars on legal fees and all this kind of stuff to take care of it that was that wednesday january 3rd fast forward friday i fly back home it's the week before my event dan i know you put on some big events you know how much work goes into that right so i'm all out like all right hey i just got dropped this bomb trying to figure out what we're going to do on the flight home. I mapped out like a transition plan. So I'm like, I don't know if I'm staying. I don't know if I'm going. I don't know what's going on. And literally leading up to my big event where I got 800 people coming into town for our prosperity bowl kickoff for the year. Well, so then fast forward to Monday. Now the, the week of my event, Monday, Rob Day gets a text message and he then reaches out to me after receiving that text message. And Rob said, big things are coming in on Eric today. We need to talk. And I was like, crap, you know, Eric's going to think that I told Rob and it's going to blow this whole thing up. So I took a screenshot of it and I sent it to Eric and I said, Eric, I promise you I didn't tell Rob anything, but Rob knows something. What should I do? And he said, oh, geez, with an eye rolling emoji. He said, make sure to go over and talk to Rob, but make sure you tell me everything that he says. So I went over to Rob's house and I got to take like, it was very uncomfortable for me to not tell Rob all the information. But I had to pretend like I didn't know anything because I thought we were going to blow the whole thing up, right? Well, then what Rob told me that day on Monday was just the basics. And so I called Eric afterwards. I said, he just knows the basics. He knows he knows that you're starting and a company. What, and what, 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 was, what, was, what, what was the basics? What was the basics? The basics, the basics were the fact that, hey, Eric Olson is starting a new company, GFI, and he's offering higher comp plans. And all this kind of stuff and, and, and ownership. I mean, and it literally was just a basic conversation. We don't know much about it, but we just know he's doing it and it just launched. So I called Eric after that and I told him, I said, Rob just knows that basically you're starting a new company. He doesn't know why, he doesn't know what it is, 
I haven't, but you need to talk to him soon. So then fast forward to Wednesday, Eric and Rob actually did talk. Right? So now I drove over to Rob's house and Rob said basically bigger things are coming in on Eric today, we need to talk again. So I drove back over to his house and the moment that we sit down, the first two things out of Rob's mouth are apparently Eric's out there telling people like Rich Stolle is on the board. Rich Stolle is not on the board. He's trying to do everything in his power to prevent Eric from doing this. But on top of that, he's telling people like Daniel Fombo where he's going. Like Daniel Fombo is not going anywhere. He's trying to request a, 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 an associate transfer to get off of his team to get ahead of this. And so as soon as Rob said those two things, it was in that moment that I had a very quick reflection. It was the fact that over my career, as close as I was to Eric, there were still a lot of things that were not ethical and that I chose not to follow. But I always chose to, like I, I always focus on the fact that there's no such thing as a perfect leader. You know, you're going to take the good, you got to leave the bad. So I took the good and I focused on the good with Eric. But there was a lot of things that he did were concerning to me over the years where I just like, I would never do that. And I never taught my team to do some of the stuff he did. So that's, I don't know, kind of leading into this, this has been my experience in the, in the industry is that um, a lot of the top leaders have, uh, if I could put any fault on WFG, I feel like they've let this go for a long time. And so we're kind of ending up with this situation. And if you talk to any of the leadership, they kind of feel the same way, or at least that's what I've seen. So uh, Nick continues to go on and talk about some of the things that um, uh, Eric told him. So let's get into that. Well, so then fast forward, like I'm sitting here in this meeting with Rob and I'm like, all right, Eric's lied to me before. Eric has done unethical things before, but Rob's never talked about how much money he wants to make. He always puts the needs of other people before himself and he's never lied to me. So I'm like, in that moment, I had to decide who do I trust? Mm. And that was the key word. Who do I trust? And the thing is, I trust Rob Day. And so I was like, you know what? I don't care if I get sued. I signed an NDA. I don't care if Eric sues me for it, whatever. I'm going to tell them everything because we need to get ahead of this and I need to protect as many people as I can if this is not if this is not legit. So on that day, I still thought that we might be going to the new company until I told Rob everything. And then we started getting connected with Rich and Ed and we started finding out all of these different things that he told us that were just completely not true. For example, he told me that he was backed by Sequoia Capital when I asked him who his backing was and he said it was worth over $300 billion. Right. Oh, well, okay, maybe they're worth $300 billion. But I said, Eric, how much are they backing you for? And he said, oh, unlimited resources. I said, can you show me documentation of that? He could never provide any documentation of that. On top of that, he was fully convinced that he wasn't going to get sued by WFG. He was fully convinced that he was doing this the right way. So obviously that's not true. We know where that's at now. But then on top of that, he said hierarchy integrity was super important to him. Well, how could hierarchy integrity be important to you when you're literally meeting with Rob Kevin and Pat, like one of their best guys, how are you going to say hierarchy integrity is important when you're offering me to go direct to the company and bypass my upline? And literally what he's doing is he was going to people's downlines. He was recruiting their teams first and then going to the big leader saying, hey, you've got no choice. You have to come with me because your team's coming with me. Does that sound like somebody that truly has the best interest of the team in mind? Like, absolutely not. But then on top of that, he was telling me things about like, oh, this, uh, Susan Davies was going to integrity. Like, that's not true. Or he was telling me, like, you know, all these different cash rastons going to the new company. Like, he just started name dropping all these big leaders where it basically sounded like if you didn't go, everyone was going to go. So you had no choice but to go. And so it's like, I love WFG. I've always loved WFG. The whole thing with his ownership program argument, it's like, yeah, we had to pause the heritage program because of him. Because of him, we had to pause it. The whole reason we lost ownership was because of him. And that's the thing that he's using as his art. We didn't even lose ownership. There's people that passed away. I saw your, your, your interview, right? The company's always honored it, always done the right thing. And the reality is this next ownership program that's coming out, this is going to be the best thing ever. I mean, we're going to have hands down the best ownership program in the entire industry. But then on top of that, I don't think they even know, Dan. I don't think they know what they just left. Like I've studied this new bonus program and it is insane. It is absolutely insane what we just got offered. And the fact is, it's like, hands down, this is the best comp program in the entire industry. And my point of saying this is the fact that there was literally 15 different things that I caught him lying to my face about to try to manipulate me into making the worst decision of my life. And it was... In the conversation with Rich, where Rich basically was talking about the fact that, hey, 
like when he left Primerica to start WFG, it was because Primerica was just acquired by a corporate company. Things were changing drastically, removing what made the business great, and company production dropped by 70% in 18 months. Well, if you're on a crashing plane, you got to push eject. You got to get out of there, right? WFG has never been better than it is right now. You don't eject out of a rocket ship. What are you doing, mm -hmm. right? And so, like, you're literally looking at this. Th that is not a motive of, oh, I want to do what's best for my people. That is a motive of the fact that this guy wants to be a billionaire, and that's all he talked about, right? I want to be mm -hmm. a billionaire. So he's like, if your vision is to go help Eric Olson become a billionaire, you should go with him to the new company. But if your vision is to do what's right for your family mm -hmm. and your team, you should stay here. And I could not agree with that more, right? And so, like, it, it hurts me because I hate saying this stuff because three weeks ago, Eric was like this father figure to me. And then to be talking about him like this now is a drastic difference. But literally, Dan, like the best way I can tell you how I feel is I felt like my parents just got a divorce and I was forced to pick who I wanted to live with. But then all of a sudden I find out that one of my parents is a drug addict and an alcoholic and an abuser and a liar and a cheater and all this kind of stuff. And if you can imagine emotionally what that feels like, that's exactly what I feel like. And I feel like I'm losing brothers and sisters in the divorce that are now going to choose to live with that person. But I know I made the right decision because I see the integrity of the leadership here. I see what WFG is doing. I see what you are doing. Ed's doing. Rich is doing. Like, hands down, this is the next generation of WFG. And honestly, WFG is going to be a better place because of this. I don't know any other teams. And I didn't know this being a part of Pinnacle. When I was a part of Pinnacle, I didn't see the fact that Pinnacle was the problem in WFG. Before Pinnacle, mm -hmm. there was no, like, stealing of teams. People didn't go to a retreat and be scared that, oh, if they go with this leader, they might be scared and, like, want to go transfer that team. There was no talks of that until Eric Olson abused the system and intentionally manipulated people into feeling like, hey, the only way you're going to get access to anything we do is if you transfer to our team. And then mm -hmm. literally getting people's spouses to code over to Pinnacle, terminating their business and stealing from people. And it's like seeing this from the outside now, I realize Pinnacle is the problem and WFG without Pinnacle in it is going to be the best place it's ever been especially with the leadership, the vision, the capacity we have, like hands down, Dan, like I, th I know you feel what I feel, but it's like I started with sadness and confusion, but now it's like intense focus, renewed energy, and the fact that like, man, like we are, but he told me that they would have nothing to worry about because all we would be doing is just coding a spouse over or a brother or a sister or a friend and then basically gradually transitioning the business over there. But because he controls the hierarchy structure, you don't need to submit map agreements or transfer agreements, which sounds like a nightmare, by the way. But you don't have to submit all this. You can just move things around. So it's like, hey, gradually just move your team over, married people first. Gradually start winding your business down with WFG. And he said, by Hawaii, that'll be like our WFG farewell party. And we're all going to go say goodbye to everybody. And then we'll be in the new company. He said, so you might have about... About 45 days of like an income dip where it's going to just like kind of a turbulent period. But after 45 days, you're off to the next level and we're on to bigger and better things because big things are here. And so I got to tell you, the, Dan, like the way that he spun it felt like it was a very safe and good move. Hmm. And he's a master at telling you the things that you need to hear. And so in that meeting, like keep in mind, like I've been like diehard WFG. I love this company. I never thought anybody could tell me anything that would ever make me consider leaving WFG. But the fact that I was like, okay, I can take my whole team with us. Everyone's going to be protected. It's all sunshines and rainbows. It's like no one's going to get sued. And on top of that, we're going to have better ownership because apparently WFG took – like all this stuff was just a foundation of lies. So I got to tell you in the meeting, if everything he said was true, then it made sense to go and – Everyone should go with us, but it's not. Eric has been literally teaching for years about don't be a candy company. Don't listen to these candy companies, these companies that look sweet on the outside and then you bite into it. Like, and literally, he just built his own candy company. Everything looks sweet from the outside until you bite in and realize what it actually is, in which case it's a disaster. And what's he thinks going to happen? Like, oh, lie to everybody. Get them to terminate or get terminated. Get over to the new company. And after they find out he lied to them about everything, what, I'm just stuck with you now? Like, what What kind of foundation of a new company culture is that? Wow. Wow. Thank you for your, thank you for your courage. Uh, so I want to play devil's advocate here. So obviously, uh, you know, this is, this is, uh, um, 
it's a public record. The WFG lawsuit is out. Um, and Eric did his lawsuit. Did you get a chance to read his lawsuit? And how do you feel about it? Uh, I got to read both. So Eric countersued, so did Sandra. And that is the worst countersuit that I think I could have ever seen. First off, like just reading through it, there are so many flat out lies in there. me over the years your feedback has been the currency that's kept me going and in doing so i feel the need to extend a sincere apology and i feel embarrassed because of how naive i was but you all know my message has always been ownership and business ownership at that well i'm here to let you know over the past 20 years i was so naive i didn't check the contracts i was young and 20 when i was coming up but i didn't own anything that i've been building over the past 20 years and i didn't realize that and uh, the way I got into this industry, somebody stole something that I owned. I didn't know why I was so excited. Nobody knew why I was so excited, but I was putting money into a GTO, a, a muscle car, and I turned my back for a split second and all my blood, sweat, and tears and love that I put into this car was gone in an instant because somebody stole something from me. Well, I'm here to let you know I've been robbed again. 20 years of what I put into a company, a gentleman who doesn't even know me, doesn't even know the work that I put in over 20 years, doesn't even know, won't even be here in the next four, five, six years to know what we're going to do in the future. An employee at that walks into a building, pushes a button, and terminates everything I've built, all my blood, sweat, and tears, and love that I've built over the past 20 years. And I was so naive I allowed that to happen. Well, I apologize. First off, I just want to say thank you. This is not aggression in any way, shape, or form. This is passion. But one thing you can't terminate are my relationships. One thing you can't terminate is my influence, my intellectual capital, my drive, my vision, my leadership, my passion, my desire. And I want to say thank you for everything you've done to me because I'm grateful for everybody who's done me wrong. And more importantly, I'm grateful for all of you that have supported me and done me right. If you want to know more information, reach out in my direct messages. I'm here to put people in a better financial position, not a risky financial position. And I feel like I've ran people into a burning building. If you want to know, and even if you don't want to know, tomorrow the truth is going to come out. We got documentation. We got evidence. We're going to let the truth be known. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. But once again, thank you because you have lit up a beast. First, First off, I want, I want to say, say thank, thank you for everybody who supported me over the years. Your Sorry about that. They said I was muted earlier. I was trying to make the audio better so it wasn't duplicated. So anyway, I was having a conversation with Paul, and I'm like, okay, but that's not exactly what we're seeing in one of the leadership from uh, the company actually sent me over some paperwork showing that Paul Hart actually didn't even get terminated. He requested to be let go. So I don't quite understand the difference on what's going on. Let me see if I can pull that up as well. And um, so what I saw in the lawsuit, since I was muted during that part, what I saw in the lawsuit was the same thing that Nick saw. It seems like there's, uh, they didn't even necessarily go, Eric and, and um, didn't really even go against what 
w w f g was suing him for he's basically saying well yeah i did all of those things but he's trying to explain why he's doing it so basically what it looks like is happening is they're taking major leaders recruiting the spouse and then they're moving the team over so if there was some terminations i imagine wfg would terminate them for that right because you probably don't want people to have access to the system and all of those things if that's exactly what's going on. And so I'm just, I'm so confused on why there's misinformation between the two. Why is Paul Hart saying that he was terminated and somebody pushed a button, but then there's paperwork that's out there that shows that that's not what happened and that he actually resigned. Now, I don't, I mean, somebody sent this to me. I won't say who it was. It's one of the higher ups. Um, window capture, let me open this. So why is he saying that he got terminated if he actually requested it? So there's, it just doesn't make sense to me. So let me open this. Boom, downloads. Upside new, create window capture. Anyway, so I'll, I'll work on getting that out. But it looks like Paul Hart actually requested it versus what he's saying and being terminated. And I can understand why they would be terminated if, like they mentioned in what the lawsuit says, is if they're recruiting the spouse, then taking all those agents and clients over. So there's nothing wrong with starting a new company. There's nothing wrong with selling insurance through another company. You can do all of that stuff. But what you can't do is then take people over. And that's basically what the, the meat of what is going on in the lawsuit is that it's not that he's starting a new, not that he can't start a new company. It's not that he can't go sell the insurance products, but the way that they're trying to move people over. And so you heard from Nick kind of what's going on with that and that it sounds like they're also spreading a lot of misinformation about the company in this process in order to get people to come over, which makes sense. I mean, that's kind of what you would have to do in order to be able to recruit people over. Um, and I just, I don't think that's necessarily right, but I wanted people to have as much information as they possibly could. If you're making a decision, if you're thinking about moving over or staying or whatever it is, I think you should have as much information as, as humanly possible. And so inside of the um, actual uh, lawsuit, basically that's the, the, that's the main part of it. That's the gist. It's not that they can't do it, it's how they're doing it and how they're going about it. And that, uh, as Nick kind of mentioned, there's a lot of misinformation going around on who's going over and how the process is going and how it's being funded and that you won't be sued if you do these things. And I think all of that stuff is just inaccurate. If you've had any experience in the industry, that's just not really how things work. So be careful if you are going to go over, um, expect lawsuits or to be terminated. And I wish I could get this, uh, I'll post it, um, the, the picture of Paul Hart's, um, actually requesting to have his termination, which I think is very different from what he's saying on this video. Um, I, I can read it to you. Unfortunately, it's not coming up on here. I don't know why it's not wanting to share, but basically he's just, you know, it's showing that it approves that he uh, was resigning from World Financial Group. This was on January 24, 2024. Um, and basically just kind of goes through the information on what he's able to do and not do. And so why would he request to resign and then turn around and do a video like that saying that somebody stole something from him. So uh, again, I don't know if you guys are like me, but I'm just getting lots of misinformation between what's actually going on and what these people are saying. And so I just wanted you to have as much of the information out there as possible. That's really all I have for you guys today. Um, hopefully Eric will get on because, you know, these guys are like brothers and friends to me. And so I would love to know what's actually going on. I would love to hear their side of it. Right now, um, they just don't match. And so I wouldn't make a quick decision uh, until that information does actually match up. So anyway, that's what I want to share. If any questions you guys have that you want to put down below, um, I'll try to answer as much as I possibly can with the information that I have and do the best that I can to, um, I just want it to be open and transparent. And that's one thing that I don't think is happening um, with the leadership as they're moving over, but a lot of the big guys are in it. So you're going to have questions from your teams. You're going to have people uh, being reached out to all over the place. They're, you know, they're going to try to recruit your agents. And, and I've had this happen. I haven't had it happen 
uh, from people inside of WFG, but you know, my wife and I came back from our, uh, our, our honeymoon and we were gone for a little while and I'm getting my phone's blown up. Um, we were gone for a little while and we came back and I don't know, three quarters of our team was recruited to another company. And so it just, it rips your heart out. And it's not, it's not that it's just business. This isn't a job, right? Like we love these people that we work with every day. We love our clients. We, I, I don't know about you guys, but I love what I do for a living. I love the people that I'm surrounded by. So when this happens, it's not a merger in a company. It's not two companies that are being split up. It's literally our friends and our family and our relatives and the people that we care most about. And so uh, it hurts. It, it hurts really deeply. So um, I wish this stuff wasn't going on. I just wanted you guys to have as much information as humanly possible uh, to be able to do, um, to, to make the best decision that you guys have. So again, that's all I got for you guys today. I uh, hope you have a great one. Appreciate you. We'll do, I'll do more information as it comes out. And if they end up unsealing the actual court filing, I would love to walk through that with you guys too, so you can see what that is. But as of right now, you got to just try to see if you can get on there and download it. And we'll, I'll see what I can actually do as far as a conversation around that. So anyway, love you guys. Bye.